I put out a question saying, would you like me to do a video on people doing auditions? And the response come back, yes. So I just wanted to cover a few things that um, may help you. They're just things that I do, but that doesn't necessarily mean that casting directors will do the same as me. It's just my thoughts on what I do and uh, what I look for when someone sends a self tape or someone communicates with me. So I'm just gonna go through a few things to give you an idea of what I, I look for. I'll have to start with nepotism and the fact that I book actors to be in the short films I make because I know them, but Normally, I would write the part around them. So the people who are going to be in my next short film called Paradigm, the, they have really been chosen because I've written the part to fit their acting style. Um, and you'll find that in lots of things. I'll give you an example of nepotism. Uh, Sylvester McCoy was up for Doctor Who and John Nathan Turner wanted him to have the part. But he had to convince other members of the team that he was the right person so they got him in for an audition and they got some other actors in for an audition that wouldn't suit the part as well so Sylvester McCoy shone in the part and that's how John Nathan Turner got Sylvester McCoy to play the part of the doctor so a conversation what I mean by that is when I get messages from people when I get things on Twitter and I get direct messages through Twitter. I quite often get into a conversation with somebody and talk to them and perhaps look at their profile, look at their show reel, look at what they're doing. And that can often lead to me giving them some work. So it's always good to engage, if you can engage with people. Um, a lot of casting directors won't engage with you because of the, the profile of the type of work they're doing. However, if you're doing stuff that's like on, on, on the level that I make it, it's always good to try and engage with them without being too pushy. And I tend to get so many people contact me and engage with me through things like Twitter. And it's great to have conversations with people. And I put hints in my messages to them that I want to speak to them more. And you'll be surprised how many people don't realize that's what I'm doing. I just wanna talk about self tapes and I get sent them obviously for different um, projects I'm making. And what's key to me is the audio quality. It, doesn't matter so much about the picture, but it matters about the audio quality. Because I want to be able to sit and listen to something, I can hear the voice clearly, uh, I can see visually, but the quality of that doesn't have to be as high as the actual voice, because the voice is the key thing, um, and the gesture in acting, which is the other thing that I find that I struggle with in self-tapes, especially with young people, is a lot of them are taught stage acting, and they're not taught what I call TV acting, where the actual movement is so much less. And you'll get young people doing, um, let's run away from this, and they'll do a gesture like you would expect they were on stage, which is so different to what I'm looking for. And it really is important that you're gonna be on screen. Screen, you see people close up, not at a distance. So you don't need to do those big gestures you would do as if you were doing something for stage. When I write a short film, I sometimes write with actors in mind. In fact, there's a couple of actors that are probably, I know there's gonna be one that's watching this who's gonna be offered a part that doesn't know they're being offered a part. And the, art, the actual part was written specifically for them. Two other actors who are in this that are the adult actors, I wrote the parts for them because I knew them. Again, this is the nepotism, but these people would really suit the part I'm, I'm making. So quite often you'll get a writer that's written something for someone very specific. And then in casting, they've got to try and get, either get the person or someone who can do that part as well. So there's another thing that, um, that, that 
I do, and I'm guessing a lot of other people, uh, other people do as well. Another thing that I I do, and I'm guessing that other people who cast or casting directors do, is they still audition the person they have in mind to play the part and not just give it to them. There is a reason for this because sometimes you think someone can really do the part justice and actually they can't. And I, I've been lucky. The ones I've chosen to play the parts in the short films I've made have all been exactly what I was looking for. And it's worked really, really well for me. But I still would have them uh, send a self-tape in against... Um, other people that are trying to get the part as well. Another one I want to look at is when you apply for things like on Star Now or Mandy and you send in a cover letter with your application, with a video, whatever that might be. And the biggest thing that just, just sends me into almost despair is I am perfect this for this role because uh, it's just uh, I don't even want to go any further and look at the person and which is really bad because that person could be the person who is perfect for the role but I don't like that I personally don't like that at all it's not something that I like to see I just like to see hi my name is da -da -da -da, and I'd like to apply for this role for the role of and that's it um, maybe just put a few things down that you've done, but not anything excessive. It just needs to be really, really straightforward. Uh, leaving it blank is also a no-no to me. If you just send it um, with a, a picture and a link to a video, I, I prefer you to say something rather than nothing. Um, and I tend to shy away from those type that, 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 that send nothing at all other than the picture and a video.